Hi everyone, it is Jillian here from Connections and it's time for our Friday morning outdoor learning video. And this week we have a really special video planned because we are going to be talking with Michael Evans who is a Windsor resident um, for all of his life and he's growing up in the Windsor Essex region. Local cameraman and videographer who might have seen some of his amazing wildlife videos um, online and especially within the last year. Uh, but he's also a father to two young girls. Um, so today we're going to be asking him about some things he does to get his children outside, um, some tips he has for exploring nature and getting outside in the fresh air, um, as well as some other questions. Whatever comes up is going to be fun, and uh, we're going to see what he has to say. So um, welcome, Michael. Thank you again for doing this with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, so before we get started on any questions about getting outside. You've, you've had some amazing videos, so we'll talk about some of those um, today. But can you first just tell us a little bit about yourself um, for anyone who's not familiar with you? Sure, yeah. Like you said, I've lived in Windsor my entire life. Um, I lived, I've lived in South Windsor for about the last five years, but I grew up here and then I had a chance to move back. So we have a nice quiet neighborhood. And it's, it's nice and close to the forest here and we come out here all the time as a family. Uh, my wife and my two daughters, we love spending time out here in the great outdoors uh, and I bring my camera with me a lot of times and uh, well going back a year now when, when uh, the pandemic hit I started coming out here more because I had more time so I was uh, taking photos and videos of all the wildlife and well, when you take photos and videos you have to share them right so I was putting together videos and, and trying to get get that out there for other people to enjoy even if it was just a two minute clip that they could watch and would Know, help relax them because nothing relaxes you quite like nature does. So we first came across Michael. Um, he had an article in June uh, 2020 uh, in the Windsor Star talking about his discovery of a rare gray tree frog which is very interesting because often when we think of going out in the woods we don't necessarily think of new exciting species in our local Windsor woods. Um, and in the article it mentions that he often went outside with his two young girls. So Michael if you can just tell us um, a little bit both about how you came across this discovery and what you learned from being in nature, um, but also how you try to impart this to your daughters. Sure. Yeah, so like I said, I was out here almost every day taking film and photos of birds. End of May, I was out here trying to get footage of warblers, which come through here. A really, really amazing amount of warblers come through here in May into this, this small piece of forest. Um, but then I started hearing other sounds, and I'm always curious. I'm not the best at identifying birds by their sound, but whatever this was was a very distinctive kind of a, kind of a sound. So I, I really got my curiosity going, and I wanted to know what it was because whatever it was, I couldn't see it. I could just hear it. So I was thinking maybe it's an owl and it's hiding. But I love owls, so I wanted to see if I could get some footage of it. So I had an audio recording of it. I sent it off to one of my good buddies who's a field naturalist over at Urca. And he got back to me right away and said, that's not a bird, that's a tree frog. And my, my mind was blown because I've never, and I've seen pictures of, of frogs climbing trees and they've got those webbed toes and everything for doing it, right? But I didn't think that there was one living out here close to my house, certainly not. And then I talked a little bit more to my field naturalist friend, his name's Russ, and he told me, uh, it's really interesting because they haven't been in Essex County in about a hundred years. And now the recording that I sent him, it wasn't just one tree frog, it was three. There was three distinct calling males in that little bit of audio recording. Now only the males croak, so we don't know how many females are out here, but come this spring, it's going to be really interesting to come back out here and see if, if they're still here, because if they're still here, that's something that's really, really interesting. How did they get back here? Was it the, uh, the eco crossing over here that allowed them to spread out? And, and now they're back in, in this old sanctuary. Um, yeah, so that, that was a very, very exciting thing. And of course, um, the Windsor Star article, that was really cool too. A lot, of, a lot of people talked to me about seeing that, so they thought that was really neat. And getting my daughters interested in nature is, it's been something that, you know, we don't really think about it, we just did it. You know, when they were infants, we had them out here for wagon rides. And I've got a bike, a mountain bike that I put a kid carrier on the back and I take that. We go whizzing down the parkway. The trail system back there is incredible. Um, this winter, we decided to not get the, let the winter get us down. So I we came out with toboggans. I bought one of those old toboggans from a yard sale last summer. One of those old metal toboggans. I don't know if you remember those, but put them both on there and 
drag them through the woods. We go through the woods. We go over to uh, the arena over there. There's a little hill. You know, they're six and four, so that, that hill is good enough for them, right? We just had so much fun, and, and my daughters are now interested in nature, so they'll, they'll do things like ask me questions about stuff, right? And, and I like to answer their questions with another question. So they'll point to a tree and say, you know, it's, it's a squirrel messed up in the top of the tree. And I said, well, what's that, Dad? And I said, what do you think it is? You know? Well, I think it's a squirrel nest. You do. It is. That's what it is. Why do you think it's a squirrel nest? And, you know, it just gets a conversation going, right? So that's what we're doing. We're talking about that. We've got our little checklists, and we see how many different species we can see out here, and they're able to identify red-breasted nuthatches and all, all kinds of different stuff that I didn't know about until I was much, much older. So that's really wonderful, and probably have not really been in contact with their videos. You have a lot of different lines everywhere, but specifically at Connections, we do um, Friday outdoor running videos, and many of them have actually been um, in the woods around here because I also, um, this is South Windsor, this is where I grew up as well, so much of what you're talking about tobogganing, we will actually have a tobogganing video up by the time this goes on. Um, so it's really great, but the way that you talk about it is very interesting because you don't talk about it as today we're going to go spend our hour outdoors. It sounds like it's very much just a routine that you do. And it's something that is very much part of your daily, this daily course of events. Yeah. So can you um, maybe talk about some of the attitudes that you guys have in your house about going outside? I know you mentioned earlier that if it's sunny, you're out. Yes. So just some of the attitudes that you bring towards thinking about going outdoors. Yes. In the past, if you would ask me what my favorite season was, I would say anything but winter. But this year, this winter, thing, things were different because... Even though it was cold and we did get hit with snow a couple times, the sun was still shining for the most part. My daughter's school day ends at around 2 o'clock, so we still have a couple hours of a nice day, nice daylight left. So it just became part of our routine. We were going to go outside. You know, we're going to, we're going to go out and do something. And, you know, sometimes they, they might not want to go out because it is winter and it is cold, but, you know, you, you get them dressed up in their snow pants and all their, their winter stuff. And then once we go outside, no matter what, we ended up having a fun time. And I use that as an example going forward. I said, well, you know, you didn't want to go out, but look at how much fun we had. And sometimes the things in my personal, through my personal experiences, sometimes the things that I didn't want to do in life, I ended up having the most fun at. So I remind them of that all the time. It's, you know, I tell them a story about a birthday party that I didn't want to go to because it was in Leamington and I didn't want to drive all the way out there. And why were they having the party in Leamington when I could have had it in Windsor? And then I go and I end up having the most memorable experience. Your children see you having fun doing it. Of course, they're going to think it's fun. Of course, they're going to want to do it. Um, so remember that when everyone's feeling a little bit hesitant about going outside when it's gray and maybe not so warm. I think you really encapsulate that mindset of if you do it, it will be fun if you just give it a chance. Moving on from that, um, we have seen some of your videos. And one of them that I really enjoyed was your, I think it was 1 a.m. You were out, you were looking for a screech owl. Um, because again, there's so many owls that you hear calling in this neighborhood. And I know you probably didn't have your daughters out at 1 a.m., but can you talk to us a little bit about how you share these experiences that even if your daughters aren't with you, how do you share these learning moments with them? Oh yeah, so I was thrilled to get that, that screech owl audio. I was just thrilled. Um, I, I went out a lot of times for late night walks by myself. Uh, just, just to say that, you know, I got my steps in for the day. I've got a step counter, and it's so quiet. As you know, it's so quiet out here at night. You never know what you're going to hear. So I go out with my audio recording equipment, hoping to get an owl. Maybe I'm going to get a coyote, because coyotes are out here now, too. You can hear coyotes howling at night. So, you no, know, I don't talk to my daughters too much about the coyotes, but I do talk to them about the owls. They wanted to see some of the videos. They wanted to see some of the photos. Um, my youngest daughter wanted a camera for Christmas. So my four-year-old now has a camera that she wears around her neck and she's walking around taking pictures of everything. So that's great. Um, with that audio recording specifically, uh, I played it for them the next day. And they were just, I mean, there's just something about the sound of an owl. Um, nowadays, we're all so connected to technology and every single thing that we do, social media, Twitter, doom scrolling on Twitter, you know, we all get caught up in that. But when you can go out there and just close your eyes in the silence of night and listen, and then you hear it, it kind of puts you into a different headspace. Uh, there's nothing that'll soothe you or calm you like nature. It's almost on a different frequency. And then once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And now, going forward, my daughters, myself, whenever we go out into nature, if we do hear the sound of an owl, you will know exactly what it is. There's no mistaking it for anything else.
So yeah, they love that kind of stuff. I always show my wife videos that I make, just get another set of eyeballs on them. Uh, I, I do that with friends as well. And now I show it to my daughters, uh, my oldest, mainly my oldest, um, just to kind of get a kid's perspective on things, you know, like, so what did you think of that? And, and then she'll say something that I had, I had thought of, you know, out of the mouths of babes, they say something that I had never, it hadn't occurred to me. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a really good point. You know, it's like a kid joke. They have their own sense of humor. Things, different things are funny to them and they might not be funny to us, but they just see things differently. And I love having that perspective on, on things that I do. Awesome. So again, it sounds like it's very much a learning experience for you and your daughters oh, very back much. and forth. And that is one of the things that outdoor learning lends itself so well is to, there's no experts. You just, you give and you take and you experience being outdoors together. And it's always something different. And as you said, it's very, very common. One thing about South Windsor is it's very much a little bit of a suburb, um, but there's really great patches of woodland and especially with the parkway that they've built. So convenient just to walk through Oakwood, keep going into, um, you can walk all the way to Ojibwe pretty much without crossing any major streets. So it's definitely fantastic how it's evolved, but can you talk a little bit about growing up in South Windsor and how as a child you developed that love for nature. Oh, sure, yeah. So here we are at, at Oakwood School. It's not Oakwood School anymore. It's now a French school called Chiron. And yeah, I went to this school and at that time, this here was an active bird sanctuary, which was really interesting. Uh, we, we kind of took it for granted at the time, but now looking back on it, what an interesting uh, addition to a, a childhood. You know, we were immersed in learning about birds and ducks and geese and swans and turtles and frogs and all those things. We had that as part of our, our learning when we were in school. We would come out here in groups, we would feed the geese, we, we knew about the grain, we would go into the barns, we would crack the ice for the ducks to land in the winter. There was all kinds of things for, for us to do here. So growing up in this, in this neighborhood, it made me want to move back into this neighborhood. So much so that the house that I live in now is the house that I grew up in. And so yeah, we've been back here for about five years. The neighborhood is the same in a lot of ways, but it's also different in a lot of ways because going back 25, 30 years, I never saw wild turkeys on my street. I never heard coyotes howling at night. I never saw deer on my street. And I think the difference now is that they've got that Herb Gray Parkway in there now, the land bridge, the eco crossing. So now they, they can come over here, go back and forth at will, all this nature. So it's better. It's, it's better than it was 35 years ago, which is something that you rarely hear that, yes, the nature situation is getting better in an area. And it, it, it's all happening because of that parkway. I can definitely understand what you're saying. Just in the last couple of years, we've seen great corned owls moving into South Windsor. And you would have never seen that. And I think that's something that a lot of people in Windsor might be able to really um, can emulate. They've seen nature moving in, and it's all the more reason to go out and take that opportunity to take advantage of this. But South Windsor is fantastic. I'm very biased in that respect, but there's lots of places in Windsor that are great. So can you maybe share some locations that you and your family go to to experience nature? I know you had a video on Tesh Island recently. Yes. Um, so just some other places that people can maybe look for some cool nature things. Well, it was, it's Ojibwe Park was the thing that got me reconnected with nature. I would go out there on Sundays with my camera and my tripod and I would just plant out by the feeders waiting for something to and then, you know, as you get evolved with your, your bird watching or bird photography, you, you want to seek out more interesting things that you can't see at the feeders at Ojibwe, right? So I was going out into the field looking for those great horned owls. And I was so happy that I saw them that, of course, I'm going to bring my wife and daughters out there to see it. So they came out with me. And those, those kind of locations are scattered out, but they're accessible. You can get to them going down to the riverfront. I remember a cold day in February. I, I took my oldest daughter down for a nice walk along the riverfront. I had my camera. And it just so happened that that was, that was one of the days of the year where the Detroit River is crystal clear. So you can see all the way to the bottom. I'm taking photos of all these things that you see on the bottom. And she's looking at it, too. And, we just had such an amazing time. Also, Essex County, we've gone out to Point Pelee. We've gone to Pelee Island. Point Pelee is great under normal circumstances. I know that it's, it's operating differently um, this year and, and into the, the spring. But we would go out to the point. Uh, we would take a picnic there. We would go to the beach all this last summer as well. So there's just so much to do in Essex County. We went to John Hart Park Homestead about a year ago right now um, for the Maple Syrup Festival. And so, yeah, the kids love doing that kind of stuff. We love doing that kind of stuff too, to get them outside and get them engaged and make memories. You know, I like to um, 
take hard copy photographs of them and print them and make a photo of them. So at Christmas or one of my daughter's birthdays, they'll get a photo album because a lot of times we don't have photo albums anymore. We just, everything's in the cloud or on, on Facebook. And if you want to find something, you're, you're digging and digging and digging, trying to find out where that was. So I like to give them those those photo albums like, like we had when we were kids. And, they pull them out and they said, can we look at, and then we go through each picture and we talk about th different things and different memories and it's just, it's important. One of my things that I try to instill in the kids is, if you want to do something, don't wait. Don't wait for it because if I would have waited a day with those bald eagles, they could have been gone. You got an idea, something you want to do, you got to do it right now. You got to do it today, don't wait. For sure, and definitely in the winter, um, that's something that you can't wait for spring. We talk about this all the time connections if you want to wait for spring you're going to miss out on feels like half a year of going outside because the weather in Canada can be so cold sometimes so I love that you're really role modeling that to your dogs and it sounds like you don't even have to think about it anymore you just do it and that is and should be always the goal for thinking about getting outside so taking that that you've been to all these great spaces and, and maybe some people in winter haven't had the chance to explore them yet um what other maybe thoughts do you have on this getting your daughters outdoors because it sounds like um, in one of the email threads that we were exchanging, you said that you've never regretted going outside with your children. Every time you've been outside, you've never had anything to regret. So do you have any more thoughts on just getting your children outside and getting them engaged with being outdoors? Yeah, if, if you're having difficulty with that type of thing, try to make it into a game. So we can uh, take a list with us and we can just make a check mark, a checklist of the different things that we see, be it you know, birds or squirrels or chipmunks or anything like that and then that'll get them engaged and that'll give them something to focus on. It makes it a little bit more fun for me too and, and I got, I'm always about making those memories with them and when and it's just a conversation starter too so when my wife gets home from work I'm saying oh we went for a walk today oh and we saw this 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 and this oh and, and you know ask my daughter well what else did we see what, what do you read you know so it just I find um, if you don't remember something from your childhood when we were six years old, we, we might not have that many memories, but the things that we do remember are, are those those important events that we've talked about a lot. That, that if you talk about something a lot, it'll make it in plants as a memory. That that's what I think anyway. Yeah, that's that's one of my, my favorite things about being a father is is the conversations and the bonding experiences that you, you get to have with your kids. And this this last year of spending extra time with them has really, really made me happy. I know it's a it's a horrible, horrible thing that happened, but if you got to take a positive from it, the positive would be that I got to spend a year with my daughters at a very impressionable age. So five and six and three and four, they had birthdays. And those are very impressionable years, as you guys know. So I'm very, very thankful for that. And I don't think I would ever regret it under any circumstances. And that is, that's, that's a really great takeaway because right now it's, it's hard for everyone. Um, it is a terrible thing that's going on right now. But there's one positive to look to. It's definitely some, some time for people to kind of maybe grown out of touch of just focusing on them and getting in the moment with those people. So it's definitely a great takeaway. Um, and just one more quick question before I move towards wrapping up. Again, in that um, some conversations we had via email, you did mention that one thing you did with your daughters is every year on their birthday, you take a picture next to a tree that yes. was from um, your childhood, it sounds like, in the house that you live in now. Yeah. I think tying yourself to nature in those ways is, is great. Similarly, when my parents moved into my South Windsor house, they took my brother, who was the only child they had, and they planted the tree, and that tree is still there, and it's much bigger than it used to be. So he you know, just give some thoughts or ideas on these little ties that you can do with your children to nature to really connect them to something. Yeah, so like you said, every year on their birthday, my one daughter's birthday is in February. It doesn't matter. We're still going outside. We're going to get dressed up, and we're all going to go out there. I'm gonna get a couple pictures of them together, them separate, and then you know maybe one of me and my wife. Um, just it's just a document. So when I do print those photos out and put them into those photo albums, that we have the chronology and we can look back and see. And, and that's kind of like the ev the evolution. So yes, that tree was there when I was a kid, but it was much smaller. I used to be able to climb that tree, and now I can't even. I'd need a ladder to reach the lowest boughs that go out. You know. But it's kind of interesting too that the evolution of the family. I've got photos of myself playing in that tree or close to it. We didn't do anything like go out there and take birthday photos, but there are a lot of photos that I still have of that tree and in the house. And I just, it's kind of a unique situation where I, I got to buy that place back and, and I live there now. So making memories and kind of 
instilling that with them is important. Even even though it was the winter and I'm, I'm making a movie about coming out here every you know every day, every season to document it, uh, I wasn't able to do that because there's really, honestly, there's not that much happening out here in the winter. There is, but not enough to come out here every day. But I still had a camera set up by my kitchen window and I was filming all the birds that would come into the feeder. And it got to the point where they were telling me, Dad, cardinal, you know, Dad, blue jay. Okay, okay. Oh, Dad, uh, red-breasted nuthatch. And so I would go and, and line up a shot and hit record. So now, now they're part of the, the process. I have to put them in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really nice that, that I'm not telling them, tell, tell me when there's a blue jay there. No, no. They just know that, that I want to know. I want that information and they're passing it on to me. That's fantastic. Yeah. We've had videos with bird feeders. We've had videos about... A lot of the ideas that you've talked about, but I think you just bring it together so well and how to make this not even a routine, just part of your daily lives. You've had a 100 hours challenge that we gave at January to get outside for 100 hours. It's a great lead in, but to get to the point where maybe you're not even counting your hours, you're just doing it. I think that's just the, the best way to go and the way to aspire to be. And I love how when you talk about your children and your wife and getting outside as a family, you can tell how much you just love it. So here that is really great and that's one of the reasons we wanted to get you on video so badly is we thought you really uh, showed these ideas that we're always trying to promote so thank you for that and the last thing I'm going to ask you is just any final thoughts anything you want to share with anyone watching I never cease to be amazed at, at the minds of kids and the imaginations and the questions that they ask so again I'm just going to keep doing my best to play along with and answer some of those questions that's our that's our job as parents right that is, like you said, that is jobs as parents. So that's, that's what we would hopefully have you take away from this video, is just all the different ways that you can get outside and really connect with your kids, uh, be a nature, never making it necessarily a routine or a chore, just something that is part of your daily lives and that you enjoy. It's a breather from the rest of the world some days. So with that said, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We were really looking for people who can really uh, show these ideas we're trying to promote and I think you did that so perfectly today. So again, thank you, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope you got some ideas. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, please let us know. Send this video before you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Connect to us in pretty much any way that you like, um, and we'll be happy to try and answer that. So thank you for watching, and again, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Thanks for having me. Thank you.